This is five on your side at six, focused on you. Tonight, a family in Berkeley is mourning the loss of their seven-year-old son after he was shot and killed inside a truck. Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. The shooting happened this morning at an apartment complex on Larry Lane. Our Justina Cornell joins us live from the Berkeley Police Department with the latest developments. Justina. Yeah, we spoke to police earlier today and they could only provide so many details, but they do believe that this shooting was an accident. Now, a call to police went out at 1020 this morning on the 6700 block of Larry Lane. We're told a seven year old boy died inside a pickup truck. Now, due to the investigation, police couldn't say if the child was alone in the car or not or explain why he was in the car in the first place. Now, they did say family was nearby. While at the scene shortly before noon, St. Louis County prosecuting attorney Wesley Abel arrived arrived to the scene. Bell said this shooting is tragic and this is a problem. Bell explained more work needs to be done to address gun violence. This is something that we have we absolutely have to address. So, you know, like I said, we, we've seen a, at least 15 percent or so that are accidental and honestly one is too many. When we see a situation like this, especially with a child, um, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's just unimaginable what this family uh, and loved ones are going through. So obviously our prayers are with them. Just last week, St. Louis County Councilwoman Shalonda Webb said that she would be proposing a piece of legislation addressing gun violence by the end of the year. As far as the shooting, as, learn, as soon as we learn more information, we'll make sure to update you on our website, KCK.com. Reporting in St. Louis County, Justina Cornell, five on your side. Tonight, the Major K Squad is asking for help to solve the deadly shooting of a pregnant woman. It happened in Wellston near Page and Skinker Saturday night. Police say the woman was driving when someone fired shots into her car. She was hit and died at the scene. Another woman in the car was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. A third woman in the car wasn't physically hurt. A representative from St. Martha's Hall says violence against women is unfortunately all too common. And what stands out to me is that not only are women always at risk, um, but women always have children with them, whether because they have the children who have already been born, children that they are pregnant with. Police say the suspect and victims have no prior relationship. They have not shared the names of the victims yet. Anyone with information, though, is asked to place an anonymous tip with Crime Stoppers. That number is 866-371-TIPS. Illinois will soon outlaw advertising for firearms that could produce a public safety threat or appeal to children, militants, or others who might use the weapons illegally. The bill is part of the state's continued effort to curb mass shootings, and Governor J.B. Pritzker says he will sign it. It would make Illinois the eighth state to allow lawsuits against firearms manufacturers or distributors. Gun rights advocates say it violates their Second Amendment rights and free speech. Tonight, St. Louis City leaders are discussing new ways to combat the rise of violent crime. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, has details on a new program using federal funds to close murder cases faster. We met Heather Taylor Monday morning at the Department of Public Safety. My background is homicide. I was a homicide sergeant. She showed us statistics detailing problem properties and the Juvenile Night Watch program where officers check up on youth who've been in trouble with the law. But something was missing. There was a, a critical need with when you're having homicide, your homicide rate is going up. What, you, what we saw was that there was a critical need there that we could address to immediately impact um, solving cases. Now the city is steering $231,000 in federal grant funds toward a new program to hire two experts to assist the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Actual detectives who actually had investigative background, extensive investigative background. These experts will assist with placing intelligence equipment in high crime hotspots, analyzing that data, mapping crime, and pitching in to help detectives solve cold cases or chase leads in active murder investigations. That's the kind of labor-intensive work that has swamped the city police department in a post-pandemic crime surge. Traditionally, the FBI statistics show that you want to have homicide detectives with five homicides per detective, but our homicide detectives are averaging above that, way above that. One officer was hired in July, another one on deck to start next month. This is geared towards helping uh, the city as a whole in preventing violence. Reporting in St. Louis, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. The city will also use a portion of the federal grant funds to hire a third person, an attorney, 
to help handle problem properties in North St. Louis. New tonight, one St. Louis neighborhood wants to increase its own taxes to pay for more cameras and police. Technology that's already active in the St. Louis Hills neighborhood recently helped police identify a suspected child predator. Now the community wants even more safety improvements. Five on your side's Christine Byers is live in the South St. Louis neighborhood to bring us what voters there will be deciding tomorrow. Christine. Mike, signs like these have been popping up in the St. Louis Hills neighborhood for weeks. It's talking about the creation of the special business district, and that would allow voters to pay more taxes for things like cameras and police on their streets. St. Louis Hills is a 1.1 square mile neighborhood. It already has 142 cameras. Neighborhood Association Safety Committee Chair Tom Scheifler says they need more. We don't have a camera for every block yet in our neighborhood. And ultimately that's the goal, is to have at least one camera per block. The system was crucial in identifying this suspected child predator quickly. And it's really good that, that our neighborhood as a community was able to assist the police in that effort. The camera network plus the off-duty officer to patrol and man the cameras costs about $150,000 a year. Scheifler is now on a mission to get an a la carte system like this to all neighborhoods, not just to those who can afford it. Any neighborhood in St. Louis City can look at doing a neighborhood watch program using security cameras, even if they can't afford a security officer, an off-duty officer. There are opportunities for private and public funding for these kinds of programs. I'm sure that if the alder person and the state rep and the politicians supported these efforts, that we can find funding for neighborhoods who might otherwise have difficulty. Scheifler says it's too early to tell whether the system is reducing crime. But we have proven that the officer can get the alerts, identify criminal activity, and respond immediately to disrupt that activity. And that keeps it from continuing to the next block and the next block and the next block. To, to a lot of residents, that's a win. It's not victory, but we have many wins along the way to suggest we should keep going with this, with this security initiative. Now, Scheifler says that it'll cost taxpayers here about an extra $15 a month, or which works out to about $180 a year. He says that taxpayers will not pay any more than $250 a year. That'll be the maximum. Live in St. Louis Hills, Christine Byers, five on your side. New developments surrounding a trucking company that employed hundreds of workers in the St. Louis area. The Yellow Freight Trucking Company has officially declared bankruptcy. The company filed for Chapter 11 relief yesterday. It comes more than a week after the company shut down operations. The trucking company has faced years of financial struggles and piling debt. Let's take a live look over Bush Stadium. Right now, Greater St. Louis Inc. is hosting a softball game showdown. Politicians from both sides of the river are coming together inside Bush for an evening of fun and some family-friendly competition. It's their way to celebrate the bipartisan efforts that help make the St. Louis metro area stronger. And our very own Today in St. Louis anchor, Renny Knott, is emceeing that event. 